Hi everyone, it's Wayne here, also known as the Plantaholic. Happy Easter everybody. And uh, today I'm going to be planting my new Trachycarpus fortunii or windmill palm, which is behind me. And I'll also be recovering my Musa Baz Jew, which I uncovered last week because heavy frosts are uh, to return again. So I'll temporarily cover it uh, before uncovering it again next week. So I've just bought this fantastic Trachycarpus fortunii windmill palm uh, from Hardy Palms in Bristol as usual, fantastic quality. It's got um, a 1.3 metre trunk and it's in a decent pot and I've just dug the hole ready for planting. So let's go and have a look. So there's a fantastic amount of foliage on the top as you can see. And I thought it would look great next to my shed, just to the left, um, just around about here. And I'm hoping to turn the shed into sort of like a jungle hut later on in the spring stroke summer. So it'd be fantastic to have this palm at the side. So you can see the fantastic trunk full of lots of fibres. And uh, of course it provides great nesting material for birds at this time of the year too. Now you can see in the past it's actually flowered. So this is a spent flower spike which is cut back. They normally flower in May and they have bright yellow flowers followed like by um, black fruits full of seeds. And they do seed around in the UK if cross-pollinated. And you can see that here it's got a decent sized root ball. Uh, these are hardy to minus 18 or 0 Fahrenheit, so they're hard, pretty much hardy in the UK. Um, only winters like 2010 or colder uh, do, you, do you lose them due to the cold, and that's mainly when they're in pots, because obviously pots freeze for a long time, and uh, obviously they don't like that. So being in the ground, you get residual heat in the ground, and there's less chance of it freezing in cold winters in the UK. So I've dug this hole, here as you can see. Unfortunately there's a big branch to the one side. Isn't it always a way when you're digging holes you find bricks or big rocks or big branches in the way. I did take one out, I don't know if I'll be able to get this one out. But obviously I did pre-measure it using a spade. So obviously I've put the spade up against the side of the pot and uh, remembered where it comes to on the spade itself so it's just above this dot here and obviously i've done the same uh, within the hole when digging it out to measure it to measure the correct depth and obviously i've done that also for the diameter of the root ball so i've laid the spade out on the top and so it roughly goes up to this first dot on the upper surface Obviously I've used that as a measure for the hole too. Okay, so I've put the trachycarpus on its side to get the pot off. Uh, what I did, I hit the pot uh, around the sides with a spade just to loosen it. I then piled up some compost bags on top of each other, leaned the palm over onto that and then um, pulled the pot off obviously so that the pot was off the ground it was easy to pull it off i've then used a garden fork to tee some of the root ball to stop the roots from spiraling round and to encourage them to spread out into the ground in the hole um, so the hole i've left for about an hour to actually warm up a little bit to actually help to warm the soil up after the winter because um, obviously it can get quite cold down to a good depth during the winter months so um, that should be relatively warm now um, and ready to plant the, the palm now the root ball here is very dry I did water it the other day but it's quite difficult to get water in very pot bound plants so it's got a fantastic root system but obviously when I put this in the hole I'm going to then absolutely flood it several times before I put the soil in the planting hole around it just to make sure it has a good drink. Okay so I've just dragged the palm into its planting hole. The wind has blown it side 
to the side slightly but I can rectify that when I'm putting the soil around it I'll straighten it up but I think on the whole it looks really it's going to look really good there um, when you're planting in, uh, all plants but especially big ones like this uh, do remember that all plants have good sides and bad sides to them so you know you need to keep turning the plant until you're happy with how it looks because quite often plants can have like a flat side uh, which looks a bit strange and then obviously if you turn it you can actually see uh, which side isn't as flat it's got uh, you know more fullness to it and obviously you want that facing um, the way where you're going to see it most often so I've actually done that and I've, I'll pour loads of water in the hole now um, to water it in before um, you know putting the soil in firming it up and making sure that the trunk is nice and straight okay so it's finally in the ground I think it looks great it, it frames the shed nicely and uh, I love the way the leaves sway around in the breeze so let's have a look close by So as you can see it's planted in between the choicer on the left and the pieris on the right um, and the trunk is nice and straight I've checked it from all angles uh, there is a slight kink at the base but obviously that's natural uh, but yeah I'm really happy with it and as you can see the planting depth is perfect so I'll give it a good soak I've actually put in a couple of handfuls of blood fish and bone fertilizer um, to help it on its way and put uh, probably about four or five watering cans at least to actually wash it in. You can see a few surface roots, um, so that's the top of the root ball, so it's perfect, it's actually the same level as the soil more or less. That's called the nursery mark, so you don't want to bury it too deeply because it can rot the, the trunk, so it's absolutely perfect, spot on. And obviously what I'll do over the next few weeks, I'll keep an eye on the soil levels in case they drop lower still due to settling. And if it does, I'll keep topping it up um, just to make sure that all of that, um, all those roots are well um, settled in with good contact with the soil. So yeah, so look at it from this angle. Looks absolutely great. lovely drooping foliage and this is the rust next to it so that's obviously just coming into bud now so yeah it will cast a little bit of shade for the plants behind it which is what I wanted too gorgeous foliage against the sky lovely clear sky and looks nice next to the Pyrus as well and of course the Pyrus and the Trachycarpus are both from China in the wild and they look really nice together from this angle too. Looking back up towards the house. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. For those of you who watched uh, last week, you would see that I uncovered my Musa Basju because we had a mini heat wave. We had temperatures up to 23 degrees Celsius or 73 Fahrenheit. And you can see in just two days of heat, it grew this much, a couple of inches or so. Unfortunately, we've got frost returning, so it will go down to freezing tonight. And it's uh, forecast to go down to minus two, minus three again in a few nights time. So I'm going to temporarily cover them back up, just as before, using these air pots stuffed with very dry leaves. And just put it on for a few nights again before uncovering um, probably next weekend but um, it's not unusual usually this part of the country um, we actually uncover them middle of April so I did uncover it a bit early just because we had that heat wave coming along thanks for watching guys and see you next week bye